This episode was brought to you by Pentester Academy, the leader in online cybersecurity education. Join over 10,000 professionals from 90 countries to learn security online. Also brought to you by Hacker Arsenal, artillery for cyber warriors. Visit us on hackerarsenal.com to check out our latest attack defense gadgets. I'm Marley Oxenholm from Pentester Academy TV, and welcome to our show, Access Point, where we spotlight cybersecurity companies and give an inside look at the people and technology behind the latest advancements in the industry. I'm Marley Oxenholm here at Distill Networks, and I'm with Anna Westelius, who's going to show us a demo of Distill Networks Portal. All right, take it away. Yeah, so what I'm going to show you here today is the Distilled Portal. Um, in two parts, it's to allow you to control traffic if you're one of our customers mm -hmm. and get an understanding of what's going on. That's the two major thing people want to know when they're running our systems. Got it. So assume you're a customer, you have your account set up in here, you can have multiple domains because bots, um, they behave differently depending mm -hmm. on the domain, right? Mm -hmm. So you might have multiple domains configured. But for the purpose of this, we're going to use our demo okay. account. And so first of all, when you log in, you get an idea of the traffic distribution. So like, how many bots do I have? How many human users do I have in comparison to each other? Uh, we do look for whitelisted traffic. So um, whenever you have resources that you don't really want to still to investigate uh, and interrogate, mm -hmm. like I mentioned before, um, you whitelist that particular resource and then we just let that move through. Okay. Um, we give you an idea of how much good bot traffic you have, how much bad bot traffic you have, mm. and human users, uh, and some controls to kind of give an uh, understanding of the distribution. Um, and then we give you an overview of the uh, actions that you choose. So through this, this portal, you can choose uh, specific settings based on the path. So if you have a login endpoint that you care about, so mm -hmm. a lot of people right now experience bot login attacks, mm -hmm. you can set specific settings only for those resources and do other settings for the rest of, of your websites. And this here just gives an overview of the distribution of responses that we've served. Um, by default, the distal solution can capture capture, block, or just not give any response at all, depending on how aggressive you want to be in your um, settings. And also, you can just choose to monitor. You, you might just want to use this for reporting purposes or labeling. Some people just use our systems to you know, report up to their board what their traffic actually is like, okay. instead of actually blocking the bots. Um, what we also provide at a high level is you know, an overview of the distribution of behaviors or mm -hmm. the buckets that we use to um, identify different bots. Mm -hmm. So we use our JavaScript tests that we use for fingerprinting or the um, fingerprint specific um, uh, rate limiting settings that we know. Okay. We also have a group of known violators, which is the fingerprints that we have identified that are bad across all of our global network. Mm. And so if you add, end up on this list, no matter which of our customers you're trying to access, you'll get blocked. Nice, okay. And so I'm just gonna take you through some of the features of this portal, kind of like how people use it. This okay. is, again, the dashboard. So this is what you end up in when you log in. Um, there is three different things that people use this for. One is, you know, understanding um, the system itself and like how well it's doing. So in terms of tweaking it or troubleshooting, mm. uh, if you're just running distill, you might want to go in and check some of these things. We're not going to focus on them here, um, but it is available. Okay. Um, then we have, let me see here. Um, In terms of reporting, what people do in the portal, right? They want to understand what's going on in their traffic. So you can go in and get an overview of the threats. So this is kind of where the threats are coming from uh, and what buckets they fall into. And the idea is that you, when controlling your traffic, you want to be able to understand what the traffic consists of before maybe making those changes. So in the settings then, you can under, like see these and yeah. then make that change. Nice, okay. Uh, and so let me start by going into the settings actually. Uh, this still allows you to control your traffic flow on your entire domain or by path. 
So like I mentioned before, if you have uh, a global problem, say you have bots all over your website, you yeah. might be able, want to be able to control them in a specific way. Mm -hmm. You can go in and change the defaults. Um, we bucket our, um, our identifiers into five major uh, binary threats. Mm -hmm. So we have known violators. Those are the ones that we know from our global network are bad. Our identities, which is bots that practically tell us they are bots, like okay. in the user agent string or otherwise that we have identified over the years. Then there are things like aggregated user agents. These usually don't help um, websites uh, generate any traffic and it's not human traffic. Some people have tools in this bucket that they want to allow, so we help them configure that specifically. Uh, but not everybody wants to block on them. We also curate a uh, list of known violator data centers. So when we talk about data centers, we really encompass anything from a hosting provider to a smaller ISP. Um, and any data center. And you really, as a website, wouldn't necessarily um, have any users originating from a data center. If you're sitting at home and you're going to you know, a website, would you usually connect through a strange hosting provider or would you go through your ISP? In yeah. most cases, you would connect through your ISP, course, yeah. meaning that if you choose to, we can just remove that portion of traffic for you. Nice. And that can be you know, changed depending on customer um, requirements as well. Then we have something we call automated browsers, and this is really the most advanced binary check. So we, we talked about Selenium before, any of the headless browser automation tools uh, that you don't necessarily want to allow on your website, just by um, activating this setting, you can remove that portion of the traffic. And all of these you can set to monitor, captcha, block, or drop. But in addition, we do append information to the request between ourselves and your origin, which means that you can use that information and act on it within your application or in your load balancers or anywhere else in your infrastructure that makes sense to you. Uh, so some customers just choose to have this in monitor in our services mm -hmm. and then use that information that we send to them afterwards. Um, in addition to these more binary tests, we have our machine learning policy. Uh, and it's really a scale where you decide how aggressive do I want this to be. Okay. So it does a bunch of checks to check for abnormalities in traffic and depending on how uh, far away from what is considered normal mm -hmm. you want to penalize on you choose to do so. So it's really a scale from least to most aggressive. Okay. The most aggressive, the more checks we've said this is definitely a bad behavior. Um, and this scale here shows you how many potential requests would be impacted and how many users would be potentially impacted by this change. Um, and then in addition, because we do fingerprinting instead of IP, so we do not track IP specifically, okay. we do this device identification method and track that user, that device over time. Our rate limiting settings mm -hmm. are based on those users, not on the IP addresses, which a lot of people use to control traffic, mm -hmm. which have over the years become less and less effective, because mm -hmm. an IP is no longer a user, especially if you're on an ISP with a lot of other home users, very for example. Um, so we really allow for a very granular um, access control or content protection, mm -hmm. so to speak. And um, you can, again, do this for the entire site or by path. So some companies just want to protect their login endpoints specifically. Then you configure your login, and you set the specific responses that you want to do. Okay. In addition to all of this, you can work closely with our uh, analyst team who will design more uh, advanced and complex rules, who will really look at the traffic, figure out what specifically is this bot and how can we block that for the specific endpoint, nice. which is more like how you would normally control a WAF, yeah. right? the rule writing type things. Um, and so those are the settings and the buckets, kind of like how we allow people to control their, um, their traffic. Mm -hmm. We also allow people to customize all the responses. So if you're having a large website, you don't want to have like the stills blocked you. You might want to have like, hey, you're now not in agreement to our terms of service. Mm. Please do this and this. And all this is configurable nice. um, for each response and each page. Um, and so that is more or less how the settings work mm. and how you control the system. Uh, let's dig into some of these uh, reports that we have and kind of like how they um, connect to those settings. Okay. 
So like I briefly showed before, there was a threats overview, um, which gives you an idea of what's going on in the traffic. And you can use these statistics to choose what you think should be your settings, right? If you have a lot of JavaScript check fails, which is related to the automated browser tests, you can set that to capture a block or a drop. And this really gives you an idea, just a high level idea of where they come from or what they're doing. Let's see if we can get some more details. The bad bots report, uh, which I really like to show to um, some customers uh, who have more specific attacks. Okay. Hopefully this will not go so slowly. Um, where you can see how we identify the bots. Um, and this is mainly based on what they tell us themselves. Um, and what threat, threat responses we recommend doing. So, for example, we have a lot of, um, like I mentioned before in our in our talk, mm -hmm. the Google bots that aren't really oh, Google yep, bots. Yep. So here in this traffic, you can see that 230,000 requests were made by Google bots, but we know that this is bad because we validate the origin that mm -hmm. they originates from. So you can get an idea of like what IP addresses are they using. Um, and this is from Amazon. Why would Google ever come from oh. Amazon, right? Yeah. Uh, and so it really gives you the ability to dig into some of you know the classifications that we're using um, and how that relates to your settings. And if you find something in here, you can make those changes mm -hmm. in those settings and everything relates to the things we just talked about. Oh, okay, nice. Uh, so, uh, in addition, we also do map out which ISP organizations the um, bad actors originate from. Mm, okay. uh, so you get an idea of, you know, all. Like, do I have any competitors in my top? You know, right. if I'm caring about scraping, is any of the people or the ISPs that we see is it owned by a company that I don't want accessing my data in that way? But also, do you have a lot of normal user ISPs with bot traffic? Do you need to be very specific in your mitigation tactic? Yeah. Because if you're having a lot of bad traffic from Comcast, you need to be very specific in the way that True. you control your traffic because mm -hmm. you might accidentally affect or impact users if that's the case. Mm -hmm. And that's again why it's so important not to base your identification on IP addresses, Got but it. fingerprints. Uh, let me see here. You can also see where in the world your bad users originate from. Cool. Yes, everybody needs to have a threat map, right? Yes. <laughs> You're not a security company if you don't have a threat map. Um, but this is also so that can just isolate and maybe uh, remove some of the countries. You don't necessarily have right. any, like if you don't have any end users coming from these locations, yeah. why would you allow traffic from there? Or do you want to put a more rigorous strategy for those countries? You don't want to necessarily block everybody, mm -hmm. but you might say, for my rate limiting policies, I'm only allowing 20 searches per user okay. because that makes more sense than you know maybe outright blocking mm -hmm. them. Uh, and those we have those capabilities as well. So it's a very flexible system with a lot of features um, where you can really decide how to control what you want to do with the bad bots. Um, and this is the most important one in terms of settings. Okay. So we give an overview of the distribution of all the settings that we walked through before um, and what they consist of. So if you want to do a check, say, hey, um, JavaScript check failed, for example, okay. are these any of the IP addresses that we care about or where we would consider having users or is this all just bad? Okay. And how then do you, would we like to uh, control that portion? And so all of these um, relate directly to um, the settings that we can control. Let me see here. Um, one of the other most important features I think of our platform is the diversity in actions that we have. And so we allow to serve captures, blocks, or just simply drop the requests. Mm -hmm. And part of that process is slowly increasing the aggressiveness of the things that you want to control. So when creating a blocking strategy for customers, we need to understand uh, what is normal and not. And sometimes that is a bit of a gray area. Mm -hmm. And so starting by introducing CAPTCHAs and dis the distilled specific CAPTCHA, which is built to be you know, difficult for bots, mm -hmm. but easy for humans, uh, give us a very uh, accurate statistic on you know, when they solve them, 
it's more likely to be a human. Mm -hmm. um, and if they don't even attempt them, we're very sure it's a bot. So we provide Makes statistics sense. on you know how many attempts, how many failed, and how many solved. Nice. And based on this, you can make your decision and if you want to move forward with another, another you know, more aggressive setting. Okay. So it's really all about looking at the you know ratios between solved, mm -hmm. attempted, and failed. Makes sense, yeah. And in this case, most of them are bots that don't even attempt the capture. Mm -hmm. So in that case, we might you know recommend that you move to a more aggressive setting. Um, the last report that we have. Um, is the targeted content report. Uh, and this is really interesting if you have targeted uh, attacks for specific resources. Mm -hmm. So for example, if you care a lot about your account login pages. Right. So here, for example, you can get an idea of what's going on in terms of you know, bot accounts and settings towards my login. So if I want to create a path-specific strategy, if I want to go in and protect my login pages, what is the current distribution of bots? What are they failing? What am I doing with this traffic? Okay. So for the specific domain, we're capturing uh, on almost all these responses. Uh, and the, this is the behaviors that we're seeing on this path specifically. And we would then recommend making a change, maybe blocking known violators mm -hmm. or you know, adding any of these to any of these settings that we, we have to ensure a more you know, encompassing mm -hmm. blocking policy. Uh, and that was actually most of what I had. This nice. went pretty fast. This was perfect. Thank you so much for showing me this. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Absolutely. Also, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook so you don't miss out on any of the latest cybersecurity news. This episode is brought to you by Pentester Academy, the leader in online cybersecurity education. Join over 10,000 professionals from 90 countries to learn security online. Also brought to you by Hacker Arsenal, artillery for cyber warriors. Visit us on hackerarsenal.com to check out our latest attack defense gadgets. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.